Anthony, I'm second year graduate student in Columbia University. Hi, I'm Li Wen. I'm also the second year master student in Columbia University. Hi, this is Hai Ruo. I'm also a second year student here in Electrical Engineering. Together, we built a 10 bit side DC and a 10 bit ultra deck with 100 kilo sample per second sampling rate. So, I would like to introduce our demonstration setup. This is the uh, main PCB and this is the power supply. Uh, it is 5 volt and it comes from this DC uh, output power supply. The audio input comes from this audio jack and it is connected to the iPad. The iPad will display the music and the audio input would uh, go through a single ended input to differential output amplifier and these differential signals would fed into our ADC after passing through a anti-aliasing filter and the ADC would output 10 bit digital voltage to the IPJ. The IPJ would do some signal processing such as add an echo or add some delay to make our sound more interesting. And here these four chips are the LDO to give the 2.5 volt supply and these two are the reference voltage which is this is this is 0 0.6 volt and this is 1.8 volt then the output of our deck would come to the low pass filter and fed into the class D amplifier and the class D amplifier would uh, drive the our speaker the speaker would display the sound we want in addition this right line is our clock input which is 100k hertz and this white line is another clock which is 2.2 megahertz now let me introduce the full demonstration first i will input the audio signal from ipad and directly send it to class d amplifier without go, go through our chip and we can hear this sound first. <laughs> okay, now I will put the signal from our deck so this signal is the audio input signal goes through the single to differential amplifier and then goes through an our ADC and the ADC send the digital signals to FPJ and we use FPJ to add some echoes on this signal and then output by our deck and uh, the output node of the deck we add uh, and a low pass filter and then send it to class D amplifier so we can clear here some echoes from our digital process First, let me introduce the main blocks inside our chip. For side C, there is a sample input circuit, a C deck, a comparator, a side logic, and a frequency divider. And there is an input register, input buffer, switch array, resistor array, and an output OTA for our chart deck. The figure on the right hand illustrates our final layout. As we can see, the sub ADC locates at the top of our chip and the uh, ultra deck located at the bottom. <coughs> now I would like to introduce our sample and hole circuit. In the design of the ADC sampling circuit, we have chosen the bootstrapped sampling switch circuit for implementation. This sampling circuit precharges a boosting capacitor CB to VDD 
When the switch is on, the capacitor will set the VGS of the sampling switch to VDD, regardless of the input voltage. By adjusting the W over L of the sampling MOSFET, we can ensure that the hold pedestal of each sampling bit is consistent. This is our schematic of sampling circuit. <coughs> I would like to introduce our frequency divider circuit to you. So, sampling for 10 cycles for, may result in that the last bit not having time to store the comparator. I would like to introduce our frequency divider circuit to you. Sampling for 10 cycles may result in the last bit not having time to store the comparison results. So, we set up to 11 sampling circles to complete the comparison, 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 comparison. Now I would like to introduce the frequency divider circuit to you. Sampling for 10 cycles may result in the last bit not having time to store the comparison results. So we set up 11 sampling cycles to complete the comparison and store the results. Our clock frequency is 2.2 MHz and the sampling frequency is 100 kHz. So we have designed an 11 division circuit to achieve this function. We use a counter composed of a JK trigger which flips the counting direction once every time it reaches 11 and outputs a signal to the external logic. This is the simulation result of our frequency divider circuit. I would like to introduce the third logic block. The whole module can be divided into three parts, including shifter, delay line, and register. The function of the whole module is to make a guess first and get the result to verify the accuracy of the original guess. The shifter would set bit to 1 from MSB to LSB. The output of shifter would be fed into the set pin of DFF in the red box after a delay line. The output of DFF would be set to 1 immediately. The output of the comparator would be received after the next DFF output changed from 0 to 1. However, we have to consider the time comparator used to generate the result. So the existence of delay line is used to give sufficient time so that the DFF can receive the result from computer even in the worst case. The SAR logic would repeat this process 10 times and output results. Then the reset signal, which is RST signal, would be set to 1 again to initial all values. Then I want to talk about pen bit, capacitor deck, and switch. This is the unit, uh, unit switch design. This unit switch can make the pin of uh, two cap become high impedance when the clock axis one, which is used in sampling period. Then in comparing periods, the switch can make two cap pin connect to VDD or GND according to the value of bit. The bottom figure is the schematic of combination of switch and capacitor array. Since we have 10 bits, so we have 1024 unit capacitor. This part is exactly the same thing in the purple box. These two nodes would be set to V comma mode and sample positive input and negative input through these two pins. Then switch would be connect to VDD and GND and compare voltage of two nodes to get correct results. This is a strong arm comparator. Here is the real comparator. This comparator can compare two inputs at the positive edge of clock and output the result within 500 p second. In the worst case, those modes are the dummy modes used in our layout to reduce STF effect. We also use finger crossing method to decrease the effect of mismatch. Okay, now let's take a look at the switch of our deck. So the schematic of our back switch is kind of similar to the ones we used in ADC. So here, if we input a one here, then the switch will pull the output voltage up to VDD. 
And similarly, if the input here is a zero and the output voltage will be pulled down to ground so that we can eliminate the glitches that we see in the in the output output signal if we input a ramp signal. And here we kind of adjusted the R on to be small. So here you can see it's 0.3 ohm so that the output voltage here is kind of close to 2.5 volts so that it won't influence the output voltage we see at the R2R deck. So now let's take a look at the R2R array part. So here uh, it's a typical R2R array. The value we choose is a certain 9 kilo ohms for R, so then 2R is 78 kilo ohm. And each R is separated into R over 2, so each R cell is 19.5 kilo ohm for our layout. So, yeah, it's quite a simple one. The input comes in from the top and it goes through our array, then the comes the V out. And here, down here are the dummies. And at last, let's take a look at the output OTA here. So, the output OTA we used is a simple two stage uh, amplifier with meter compensation. So, by here, we kind of adjust all the GM over IDS to around 10 to get, um, to get our desired performance. And also, we add the meter capacitor, which is one picofarad, and also a meter resistor whose value is 14 kilo ohms to adjust the pose and add a zero to make our uh, OTA more stable 